This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. What you just heard there was me having a stab at the guitar solo from the kind of song that used to crop up regularly in the charts in the late 70s. Uh, I think that one actually made it to the top 10. The song was uh, Milk and Alcohol by the band Dr. Feelgood featuring the wonderful Jippy Mayo on lead guitar. And um, the thing about that song is the memories it brings back for me. Uh, I'll link to the song down in the description, by the way, the video for it. Go and have a look at it, because um, they look a right bunch of ruffians <laughs> in the video. Uh, and that was apparently them spruced up for the camera. Um, but anyway, my parents were having none of it. They weren't going to let me uh, have any uh, records by that bunch of reprobates uh, after seeing them on top of the pops. Um, and in the 70s, you know, the way you listened to music was, you know, on vinyl, on cassette, on 8-track cartridge or on the radio. But there was another option, a service that you could kind of describe as the 70s version of Spotify. It was called Dial-A-Disc. You used to pick up the receiver on your old rotary dial telephone and dial 1-6 and you could listen to uh, whatever um, was the current pop record they were playing down the phone. I just listened to it in the earpiece. Um, it was horrendously expensive, but you used to wait till your parents were out because this was the days before, um, you know, itemised phone bills. So, you know, if the phone bill was a bit chunky in the next quarter, they, they, um, they had no idea it was you that had been listening to uh, this. Anyway, basically, um, the record used to change every day. I remember there was one day my parents were, were out, out at work or something and it was a school holidays and I listened to that song uh, repeatedly on down the phone line. Anyway, I digress. Uh, that's just the memories it brings back for me. Um, here's a little bit of a look at what's going on in the solo. Solo explanation. Okay, as always, we'll begin by looking at what's going on under the solo. And uh, it's basically a, a one, four, five blues in C. Um, so we have four bars, or three bars actually, of, on a C5 chord. <laughs> Like that, then we ascend uh, to the F via this one. Like that, so C, D, E flat, E, and then up to F for two bars. Then back down to C for a couple of bars. Then we have a, uh, a little bit of a back and forth between an F power chord, or an F chord, and a G chord. Um, and the F was sort of outlining via this little pentatonic motif. So it's an F major pentatonic. And then into the G5 like that. So a couple of times through that. And then uh, back into the sort of the main riff of the song, really. Like that, so that's C, B flat, F, G, and back to C again, all done in power chords. And over the top of all of that, um, well, what, what we're playing in the solo is basically C minor pentatonic, that's the headline figure. Uh, we start off with this unison bend, like this. Uh, there's a G note there, there's an F note there, and we bend the F note up to the G. We get that. Basically just coming out with that C minor pentatonic pattern there. Um, the interesting thing about that bend is uh, the way it comes in. Um, it lasts for a, an entire bar. It, it's just sustained for uh, the entire... Sort of, there's two bars of like pre-solo, let's call it. Um, and that bend is uh, sustained over the first of those two bars. Uh, but it actually comes in on the and 
of beat four on the bar before. So if you imagine it basically like this, one and two and three and four and like that, just that sort of preempting the beat. It's known as a push, and it's a good way of um, you know, injecting a bit of urgency and excitement in the proceedings. So we hold that unison bend, and then we've got... So... Just fairly standard pentatonic double string, uh, double stop string bending kind of stuff. And then we're into the main solo. This is where the kind of... That C5 chord uh, begins, and we're just playing this unison bend for the entirety of those four bars. Like that. Um, then we're up onto the F chord, and we use a pair of basically some uh, double stops here played in triplets. Uh, so we've got this uh, G and E flat note um, coming from that pentatonic shape there and this uh, F and A notes coming from the F chord and we've got like that so da 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 triplets basically um, and then we're back into the unison bends again uh, so and then we've got this uh, this kind of descending uh, C minor pentatonic thing play that again and at this point we depart from the C minor pentatonic uh, by going up to essentially that there now what's going on there um, you can see basically just from looking at what I'm doing with my fingers that we've taken you know this this thing and moved it up two frets so what happens if you move a C minor pentatonic up two frets it becomes a D minor pentatonic or put another way it becomes an F major pentatonic so at this point we're playing over the that part of that that F major kind of uh, pentatonic kind of thing as we're um, you know, in that part of the uh, the chord sequence. So this is a good little tip you can use as a very, very accessible way of playing over the changes in a blues. When it goes from the one chord, the C, up to the four chord, the F, if you're playing just this standard minor pentatonic blues kind of thing like this, um, then all you've got to do when it goes to the four chord is move that... shape up a tone like that and suddenly you, you, you're playing something that's relevant to the four chord you're playing an F major pentatonic in this case um, and then a little bit of uh, let me go and then we're into the um, you know the main riff again but just spelt out in notes like that basically um, so a cool little effective solo um, what can we learn from this well just starting on that um, the end of a beat rather than the down beat uh, it's called a push as I said and it's a great way of injecting a little bit of excitement like you you're straining at the leash to get going um, you, you find this a, a lot in in many blues solos um, the um, repetition, I mean, if you, ever you needed evidence that repetition is, um, you know, a powerful thing to do in a solo, then just look at the first four bars of this solo. You don't get much more repetitious than that. And uh, this, this thing, as I said, about taking the... Um, there's your minor pentatonic that, you know, most blues players kind of spend a lot of time in. Just move that up. Two frets when you go from the one chord to the four chord, and you're now playing the major pentatonic of the four chord. As I say, very um, accessible and you know not not to have to think too much about it. Way of uh, beginning to play over the chord changes in a blues. So there you go. That's what's going on in the uh, Jippy Mayo solo from Doctor Feelgood's uh, Milk and Alcohol. Go and have some fun with it. <laughs>
And as always, there is a full tab for the whole thing in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a clip of me playing the solo and a jam track for you to play along with and that explanation you've just seen there. All of that, as you can probably see, is up on my Patreon page. There's the address and the link is in the description. $3 or £2.50 a month and you get all of these goodies that go along with these YouTube videos. A massive heartfelt thank you to everyone who supports me in that or any of the other ways, all of which are also linked down in the description. And that is pretty much it for you today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the video and found it entertaining in some small way, maybe even informative as well. And if that's the case, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not give me a like while you're at it? Don't forget, as always, the live stream every Friday, 5 pm UK time, where we drink beer and talk music and guitars. What's not to like? Fantastic way to kick off the weekend, and I'd love to see you there if you can make it. But for now, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.